Have you ever wished you could be part of the audience when we film LED Live? Well, you're about ready to get your chance. We're doing a live event at the Collegedale Community Church in Collegedale, Tennessee, August 17, 6 through 10 p.m. The purpose of this event is twofold. First, we want to give back. Many people have reached out to us and told us they appreciate the ministry and LED Live in particular. In some cases, it has become part of their lives and something they look forward to every week. We want to give you the opportunity to share that experience with a friend in person. Second, in 15 years of ministry, we have never really made our needs known. We are growing, and for us to push the boundaries of what is possible in ministry, it's going to take time, work, and money. We're going to share those needs with you and invite you to partner with us. Unscripted videos are fun, but our LD Live show on YouTube is edited in advance, uh, so we can't really interact with you. But we can at our LD Live show at our live events. So come and ask us questions, and you know, we'd love to hear from you. You've heard us talking about documentaries and sharing resources and t-shirts. These will all be available after the live event. One more thing. Backstage passes are available as part of our fundraising. Now, remember, the event itself is free. Registration is free, and everyone needs a ticket to get in. But for those who would want backstage access, that is available for purchase today using the link on your screen. Warning, this episode may contain content that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up everyone? Welcome back to LED Alive and today we are discussing the Paris 2024 Olympics ceremony. Now you might have heard it all, but we are going to the behind the scenes of what this all means behind the dark origins of this Olympic God's feast that was being portrayed and I'm telling you, you're going to learn something new today and it's going to shock you and hopefully it will be of value to you. So, anybody watched Olympics ceremony? I know you did part of it, right? Yeah, I, I watched it uh, probably for the first hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Anybody else? I was actually outside doing something and I walked in and I had some family in town. And so they were all watching the opening ceremony. And I walked in just at the tail end of this thing. And I remember just being like, what is this? <laughs> wow. Well, I left right before it. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know what lucky, happened until lucky the next you. day. Didn't yeah. fry your brain. <laughs> nope. Wow. Nope. Yeah, same. I didn't know. I, I saw the media uproar after the fact and like the pictures yep. and all that. Me too. Yeah. I wasn't really interested in watching it. But, um, you know, the picture that we all probably saw was this one one at the top where a, a lot of Christians were upset because they said there were trans and LGBTQ people and uh, drag queens uh, pretending to be part of the Lord's uh, Last Supper, which is a painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. So this is what upset a lot of people. And so this was the beginning of it, of this scene here. And then this guy came out. So he's getting put down on like a platter or something. Does anybody know who this guy actually represents? That is not sushi, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or a Smurf. I, yeah, or a Smurf. You know, we did a show on on blue. So whenever I see people painted up in blue, it's pretty interesting to mm -hmm. kind of recognize real quick. There's a lot of different cultures that have blue people. Mm -hmm. That are usually like demons and stuff, right? Yeah. Like you see yeah. it in Avatar, you see it in Aladdin and... Uh, yeah, a lot of different ones. Oh, and then... Yeah, the Hindu gods are all, you yes. know, the blue ones. And, and there's some pretty, like, racy ones where they're, like, the doing... The X-Men. X-Men. Oh, yeah. It's got blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Smurfs. Yeah, so Smurfs. So much for being family-friendly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they got children as well on, on the side there. They got... Yeah. 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 All yeah. size and shapes. Someone was letting me know that the purpose of this was so that anyone watching would be able to identify with someone on screen. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. It was all inclusive. inclusive That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's that inclusive, though, for children or for, uh, you know, people of different religions. And it's interesting that, you know, Paris and France are so like secular, but then these are Olympic gods. That is a religion that's being portrayed here. Right. And if it's all inclusive, you know, I mean, it's like, I guess, include the people that would make fun of Christianity. I mean, it says that, but it didn't start that way. And I'm sure, Danik, you're going to get into that, the origins mm -hmm. of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So yep. they could say all they want, but there's there's a purpose here. Yeah. 
So then we also have this image here. This is a trans woman or a drag queen who was uh, walking on this table that was used for the Last Supper, and they had like a catwalk fashion show with these, you know, people from this LGBTQ community uh, right before the the Last Supper was held. Allegedly. Uh, yes. <laughs> Allegedly. I mean, like here at the <laughs> at the Paris Olympic, not uh, when Jesus was around. Um, so this is the guy who is behind uh, the whole design, I guess, of the whole um, Paris Olympics uh, it's opening ceremony. His name is Thomas Jolie, I guess is how you pronounce it in France. Uh, this is in the rap. It says, the ceremony was designed by Jolie, the French actor and director who was appointed artistic director of ceremonies in 2022. Quote, for Paris 2024, appointing Tom Thomas Jolie as artistic director of the ceremonies is an ambitious choice that is consistent with our vision. With his impressive career, Tom Thomas Jolie is at the forefront of the young, creative, and ambitious French artistic scene, explained Tony Estonier, Estonier president of Paris 2024 at the time. His extraordinary shows are proof that he knows how to break norms and take them to the next level. And then this is what he says, Thomas Jolie. Um, there's Dionysus arriving on a table. Why is he there? First and foremost, because he is the god of celebration in Greek mythology. And the tableau is called festivity, Jolie said. Translate it to English. Okay, so that's a Greek god, the blue yeah. guy. He's talking about the blue guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a Greek god. So the Greek god is the god of celebration in Greek mythology, and he is arriving on this table that looks like the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, th mm. yeah, this is in response with Christian's outrage, saying that it looked like the Last Supper. And oh, gotcha. Tomas is like, no, that's not actually the case. That was not my inspiration at all, or the painting from... Well, who painted Leonardo da Vinci? Yes, yeah. that, mm -hmm. that was not his inspiration. It was yeah. actually this Greek god. Yeah. It just happened to be uh, in the same assembly as the <laughs> painting. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, like, there's the same sort of characters in the same positions yeah, of, like, yeah, yeah. The, the, the painting. Too similar. Yeah, but it just happened to be. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's kind of like evolution, right? You just kind of mix up the bag and you throw it together and it looks like that, right? <laughs> yeah. He's also the god of wine, which is also one of the Jews of France and the father of Zekwana, the goddess of the river Seine. The idea was to depict a big pagan celebration linked to the gods of Olympus and thus the Olympics. So I find it interesting. Obviously, he's saying like, well, we just want to have a big pagan celebration, which in and of itself is kind of like uh, yikes. Mm -hmm. But also, this is the god of wine, right? And if this was portrayed... Um, as uh, the Lord's Last Supper. Then what comes down at this place? It's uh, a god that represents wine. What was being drunk what, at the Lord's Last Supper? Yeah, the wine representing the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and, you know, being covering the, 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 the sins. And yeah. it's interesting that Revelation has the end of the world, a cup of wine that mm -hmm. is really like making all nations drunk, right? With this like false doctrine. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting. Yes. So it, it really is, seems to be like they're saying, um, get lost, you God of the Christians. I, I'm, I don't want the blood of Jesus. I don't want the wine. Instead, we want this god of revelry and wine and all this other stuff and feasting and and that kind of wine it's I, i'm not saying that's what they're doing i'm saying it's an interesting contrast an interesting concept given that he does say in a later quote that i'll show you that it was inspired among other things by leonardo da vinci's painting well and the given the history of the the French Revolution and what that really meant for God, right? We don't need God. We'd rather have reason than God. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see this many years down the road, that sort of um, spirit, if you would, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being still brought to the table, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Drop that one. <laughs> All right, so here is the man himself again, sitting here as the blue man. Again, I up this, so it might look a little bit funny, but I want to make sure it was a decent quality. Now, um, let's talk at Dionysus. Uh, his name is Dionysus Eleutherius, 
And he's also known as the Liberator and uh, Bacchus. Um, <clears throat> he's the god of winemaking, fertility, festivity, insanity, ritual madness, religious ecstasy, and theater. His name is also the Liberator. Interesting. Okay. A couple things right here. I just wanted to point out that you capitalized the word God because it's the beginning of a sentence. Yes, and not he's necessarily not, meaning yeah. the God. So the reason why he's known as Bacchus by the Greeks is because uh, for a frenzy he is set to in, in, induce called Bacchaea. And as the liberator, his wine, music, and ecstatic dance free his followers from self-conscious fear and care and subvert the oppressive restraints of the powerful. His thyrsus, or tharsus, a fennel-stemmed scepter, sometimes wound with ivy and dripping with honey, is both a beneficent wand and a weapon used to destroy those who oppose his cult and the freedoms he represents. Those who partake of his mysteries are believed to become possessed and empowered by the god himself. Well, doesn't that just sound like the devil? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... He's going to destroy you, and they call it a cult... And it's all about revelry, and it, that's that's fascinating. And why to me. do you want to include that in a, in an opening ceremony uh -huh. to the whole world? Uh -huh. The whole world is about watching. About literally replicating the idea, the iconic idea of Jesus going to the cross to save humanity. Like yeah. it's so opposite because it's in their history. What are the Olympics about? Are you going to get to that? I want to go ahead of you. No, no, go for it. How it started. The Olympics is literally a pagan festival to the god Zeus. Mm. So this is an off-brand for the for the whole thing. Mm. Is it more blatant nowadays? Sure, mm -hmm. but if you know that, you know, and that this is this is my unpopular opinion, so to speak. About I love the, it. The speak Christian freely. Outrage. You will not be judged outside of this well, table. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the comment section, however, no guarantees. paganism is uh, in direct conflict with Christianity. So mm -hmm. I understand the offense and the outrage. It should be there. As Christians, we are called to live a certain way and share the love of Jesus and call sin by its rightful name. Sure. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the Olympics, which started, has its history in paganism. It has its history in being a festival towards a pagan god. And then we have the director paying homage to a Greek pagan god. So he says, I didn't see that that quote where he switched up. So I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. seeing that. Um, then Christians being offended in this context is bizarre to me because it's as if it's as if I am a, a vegan for spiritual reasons, and then I go to a meeting at a slaughterhouse, and I'm offended by what I see. <laughs> yeah. Because I should know the context. Yeah. Why am I shocked at what's yeah. happening here? Why are you slaughtering pigs? Don't you know that it's That's unclean? That's offensive to me as a vegan. It's like, I don't get it. So, yes, I, I understand the outrage in its general form, but in this context of the Olympics, why are Christians who should be knowledgeable, mm. sit down mm. and observe this thing and be shocked by the paganism that's all around when this is literally what the Olympics is all about. Has that's a valid in. point. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a point worthy of mentioning for sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Interesting. Mm. Drop the hammer. One thing, though, that I find <laughs> absolutely unfortunate, I'll put it this way, is uh, our leader's response to it. Did you see Jill Jill Biden's reaction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was there. She attended the Olympics and mm -hmm. afterward at a press conference, she called it spectacular. It was spectacular. The rain did not dampen our spirits. And Casey, honestly, every step of the way, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, oh my God, how are we going to top this? How are we going to top this? So, okay, so Paris has the, you know, Eiffel Tower, but we have Hollywood right. and, and right, and the magic of Hollywood that makes all dreams come true. So I think we're going to be okay. Now she's a self-identified self Catholic, right? Wow. Mm. Yeah, so and her so husband. that's one thing. It's one thing to, to be blunt, leave paganism, let them, let them do what they do. It's another thing as a Christian or a believer in God to see that and say, that's spectacular. That was that's the other side. Artwork. Yeah. I think that's the other side of the spectrum of like just taking it in. And, yeah. and it reminds me uh, of the three reasons why people leave the Christian church. It's indifference, it's satanic deceptions Hypocrisy. and it's the, and the pressure of circumstances. And when I'm thinking about the satanic deception side of things, 
Satan always goes for the person with the most influence or is in a position of influence. So someone like Jill Biden, who's a Christian, saying something like, look at this pagan display is spectacular, I believe, is a form of satanic deception mm -hmm. to deceive Christians all around, to yes. accept this as, oh, this is great mm -hmm. stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's really unfortunate. Good point. But but here's, here's where I'm going to give you a tiny little bit of pushback. <clears throat> In this world of inclusion, is that's what they're. I think they're trying to do, right? They're trying to be very inclusive with adding all these details in there. It's like the very, very group that is probably the most vocal with, "Hey, you've offended me because of your Christian beliefs or whatever." Like this would turn around and do this to another group. Yeah. Like that to me is like, but why would you do that? If that's your one main thing, it seems like you would be the most sympathetic towards not offending other people for mm. the sake of offending other people. People. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, don't be offensive just for the sake of being offensive and then wave your flag. Don't be offensive to me. It, it, that doesn't make any sense at all to mm -hmm. me in the world stage. And this being a world stage seems rather purposeful. Mm -hmm. Seems like the dig. Uh, I, I have a really hard time being believing that people would be like, oh, uh, sorry, we didn't know. I mean, how many committees did this pass through? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how many people sat around and went, this is a great idea. Let's do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like, it can't, it can't be that you didn't know that this was going to happen. And like, well, we didn't mean to be offensive. Really? Yeah. You're in the center of Europe where a lot of these like art pieces reside. Mm -hmm. to, to this Dionysus, I think it's interesting that he's the god of theater. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's being put on display in this way, mm -hmm. in this theater context. That's a good point. Yeah. All eyes on him. Good I mean, oh, it's like wow. we're taking part in this ritual, right. this Trade. festival. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> do, you, do, do, do you think, though, in, in a weird way, like they are just trying to build a divide? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like it. Like like it's playing he the Hegelianism, right? It's yeah. really putting this group against this group, and then let them fester with each other, and then we'll provide some other sort of. And then that is completely. I, I believe that's what they're doing because that sets you up for the beast power to come in and the mark of the beast to being pushed yeah. because the beast power coming in as a peacemaker to be like, well, I'll make sure to unite everybody under one rulership so to speak so that you can get the mark of the beast pushed yeah but you have to have chaos first and yeah. that's what's yeah. happening all over the world right now yeah and people are i mean you just you just look through youtube like people are genuinely really offended by this mm -hmm. right you're seeing a lot of people be vocally setting forth forward like but you know they'll watch the soccer game tonight <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yes, I know you're making a good How point. How far does your rage go? You're making a good point. How many yeah. Christians are boycotting this? <laughs> yeah, you're making a good true. point. Anyway. You know. All right, so moving on. So, Dionysus's parents, surprisingly, not surprisingly, are Zeus and Semele. So let's take a look at Zeus. Zeus is the god of thunder, lightning, rain, and wind. Remember Luke 10, 18? It says, and I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. According to study.com, Zeus's name comes from the Latin word deus, which means god. Now, the Slavic root word dio means to shine, which reminds me of Lucifer being a light bearer. And it also shares roots with the Proto-Indian-European god Deus, the god of the sky or sky father. And interesting that the Bible describes Satan as the prince of the air, mm -hmm, right? Exactly. So there's a lot of similarities there that uh, people, generally speaking, recognize. Now, here's his mother. Uh, in Greek mythology, Semele was a mortal get this, mortal, unmarried princess. She was seduced by Zeus, who had disguised himself as a mortal. Uh, what story does this remind you of from the Bible? Who was, uh, who was um, deceived by uh, another creature who disguised himself? Satan. Exactly. Garden of Eden with Eve. Um, so she got pregnant by Zeus and had Dionysus after she died. Now, Semele means mother of the earth, hmm. just like Eve was the hmm. first woman who was ever created and Semele was was she she died because uh, I guess the wife of Zeus found out that he was cheating on her and killed Semele but then she was later on raised back to life by her son Dionysus and uh, she became a goddess just like Satan told Eve that she would become like god you know if you eat of the fruit 
Um, so interesting that there's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, that is interesting that, you know, the original lie that was told to humanity, you just see this like lie, like repackaged and sort of handed to different cultures. Mm -hmm. But you can see the actual original lie still embedded into this lie. Yeah, absolutely. And so when you think about this, what does that make Dionysus? It makes him the son of Lucifer, right? Oh, interesting. Isn't that crazy? Instead of the son of God, like instead of the promised one that's coming, right? It's like pretty the, much the yeah. sort of the a anti version yes. of twisted that. Version, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the twisted version of that. Because like, again, like he, and we see it right here. Uh, for the festivities segment, Thomas Jolie took inspiration from Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting to create the setting. Producer said in the statement, Clear, and then he says, clearly there was never an intention to show disrespect toward any religious group or beliefs. Jolie is not the first artist to make reference to what is a world-famous work of art, from Andy Warhol to Warhol to The Simpsons. Many have done it before him. But so he's saying, or the producers are saying, yeah, he did take inspiration from this. So now we have this painting that depicts, uh, the original painting depicts Jesus with the Lord's Supper. But then here, in its stead, we have this Olympic god come in its place that we can literally see as the son of, of Satan, of Lucifer, who is the god of wine and reverie. So instead of saying, well, it points to the wine as like Jesus' blood and redemption and forgiveness of sins, it's an opposite of that, of this satanic partying revelry with wine. And so, and anybody who says something or, or goes against this God, he says, I'm just going to destroy you. And he's considered the liberator. I'm going to set you guys free through my parties and revering and everything, worldliness. And if you don't follow me, well, you're destroyed. That's literally like the, 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 you know, an MO image. of Satan. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That could be his like tagline. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy, actually. But to Kendi's point, it is really interesting that this is them heralding their own kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's, he said he was trying to be inclusive and, right. and, and celebrate diversity and all that, which I still think it's interesting that he chose this way, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it is telling the story, but it is close enough that p people mix it up. And that's why all, everyone is heated up. But um, you guys might have heard about... Um, for the for the sport of surfing, there's this guy in Brazil because I'm you know I'm keeping up with everything Brazilian, right? Nice. <laughs> and there's this uh, surfer called uh, João Chianca, and he was gonna re represent Brazil in the Olympics for surfing. And when you think of America, to a symbol to represent America, you might think of an eagle, you might think of the Statue of Liberty, right. you know. Right. Um, in Brazil, we have the statue of the Christ the Redeemer, mm. right? And he had that on his surfboard and he was asked to remove it because it was Christ, a religious figure. And they couldn't, they couldn't have that mm. because they were trying to be neutral with everything. No, right? come on. Yeah. They, they so had much it. for inclusivity. Yeah. I know. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it was like, he, he posted on his, um, on, on his Instagram two weeks before the Olympics happened. He's like, yeah, I can't have it. Even though this, this is like what symbolizes Brazil. You either choose a soccer ball or Christ the Redeemer, right? <laughs> and it's, it's it's just a statue to represent a country, not really. Yeah. Well, well, I think that's a, even doubly um, interesting when looking at Japan's outfits. Um, I noticed mm. lots of dragons that they had on theirs. Mm. If that was a symbol that symbolizes their country, I mean, that is fascinating that they would say, you can't have that, yeah. but you can put a dragon on you. Or you can have Christ the Redeemer on a surfboard, but you can have something similar enough to Christ on the opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if it is or if it's yeah, not. Right, so, right, like, right, right. I see your point, Candy. It might have not been mm -hmm. Christ or mm -hmm. the Last Supper, but it was still a religious yeah. figure yeah. enough that, like, even just a symbol of it wasn't allowed for other yeah. people. So but is, they tried to do it. So, is Zeus right. not a religious figure? Or were Dionysus or whoever that was <laughs> that they I were depicting? Oh no, that's not a god. Here's the thing that I want to say though: I, I disagree with being offensive in general. Okay, so let's just say, like, there were some Christians that were dressing up as drag queens, and they were saying, "You're going to burn in hell," and the 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 whole ceremony has to do with like, you know, ha ha ha! Look at these guys; they are not going to make it to heaven, right? I would have just as much problem of a Christian doing that. And I would say, that's not okay. You're making fun of humanity. Don't do that, right? 
but why why is why is they why are they not recognizing this and they're coming out saying you're right don't do this that's a bad thing i mean seriously i would expect christians to call out other christians if you're being ornery mm -hmm. yeah. where's the people that are in this lifestyle that are saying you know what you're making fun of somebody i, I disagree with that they should be coming to the forefront and mm -hmm. talking about that i agree so here is the image again, just for as a rem reminder of what it looks like. And Thomas Jolie, the artistic director behind the flamboyant opening ceremony, said the scene had not been inspired by the Last Supper and depicted a pagan feast linked to the gods of Olympus. That's interesting. That so is interesting. I was like, I'm going to look into this. What is that? This is a Dutch art and architecture historicist, uh, Walter Schoenenberg. Now, uh, for those who don't that know, again. <laughs> Walter Schoenenberg. I am Dutch, so I can I can read this. Nice. Trust me. Nice. So I will translate directly to as to what it says. Um, he's saying uh, at the opening ceremony of Paris 2024, there was a tableau, uh, a live painting shown of the Feast of the Gods uh, of the painter Jan van Beilert in 1635, which is kept in the Museum Dijon. Apollo, the sun god, is notice noticeable by, by the crown with the rays of light. And Bacchus, who is Bacchus? Dionysus is another name for, uh, for uh, um, Dionysus. Uh, he has the grapes on his head. So this is the painting right here. What do you guys see? I see a goat man. Hmm. That's <laughs> oh, where? The, I mean, the half goat bottoms with the yeah. wow. amalgamation. I mean, that did not notice that. That's pagan, yeah. well, right yeah. off the bat. Do you you remember it was in? Um, it was in Chronicles uh, of Narnia. Yeah, Lewis? Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. It was Mr. Tumnus. Who so what does it mean? Pan. Pan was the Greek mm -hmm. god of uh, a sort of deviance and sexual mm -hmm. rape and torture oh. and, you know. Yeah. So there's also a bunch of naked people. But look at what I'm about to highlight. Yep. Angels. But that's children. Oh. That's babies. What are they, what are they called? Mm. Yeah, Not, yeah. I always um, thought this was weird in art anyway. Um, Valentine. What is it? What are the babies? Uh, oh, Cupids. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that's babies, right? Okay. Now, this is a, uh, a clearly a painting of uh, the Feast of the Gods. Yep. Uh, we see Dionysus there e enjoying his grapes. And they're having alcohol. They're drinking. They're feasting. They're reveling. There's nakedness and nudity, and there's children. Now, look at this. Joining the revelry. Yeah, honestly, um, I think any normal um, Christian parent would would. Why do we have to keep asking that question <laughs> when it comes to pride parades? Like, why? Why are the children there? Yeah, I don't want to generalize, but when it comes to any uh, significant event where where pride is being displayed, why do we keep having to ask that question? Why are kids involved? Why are kids here? Because I think that the the general idea is that kids are not ready for yeah, certain no, no, no. types of life. When right? I ask that, it's like that's problematic. Why do we even have to ask that oh, question? Why yeah. are they there? Type of a thing. Mm -hmm. Like I think the world that is trying even to be part of the. the why, like remove them. <laughs> in the I world. think I think they're adding this into the equation, though. Oh man! I, and, and as much as the LGBT community does not want to address this children is the next frontier yeah, yeah children are already this, here. yeah this yeah. is where they are going with this they are dropping the age of accountability and whatever you know it's it's coming and and i was on on twitter because that's where you get all the commentary right oh. on yeah. twitter you, you can see people defending this it's like oh no it's that because kids should be there 
Yeah, yeah because like, oh, you know, it's just because your definition of sexu sexuality and, and diversity in America is different from Europe. What? Um, wow. In Europe, it's art. Wow. It's art to have Especially kids the dance French, with half-naked you know? people. Yeah. Yeah. Just look at the old paintings yeah. and whatever. I mean, it's like, uh, you're just too Americanized. Just the West culture is different. My, my husband said, I, I cannot verify this because he did not see this, but basically he said someone's parts were I saw hanging that. out. I saw so that, during, during the So you saw it? I saw that. So there you go. During the ceremony, I saw there was a, um, a, a, a gentleman that picked up the child and was dancing with the child. And people were commenting on that and saying, like, why is this person, like, you know, dancing? I mean, dancing is an act of... It was a sensual dance. Mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> the whole thing is sensual, though. <laughs> yes, the I whole know. Thing is sensual. I know. It's I problematic. Want them touching me in the first place, you know, yes. even if it's just a square yes. dance. Like You're that. adding I alcohol mean, and children <sighs> and revelry. And but just for me, just to think like literally someone's parts are hanging out uh, with a child present is bizarre to me okay like, so we, we we deal with this in this country all the time with the drag queen thing that is being displayed in front of children and, and everything's hanging out there too yes and lots of parents like like i would have a problem if a female dancer was wearing a g-string and doing those kind of things in front of my children at a pu at a public library i would have a problem with that but but the fact that it's a male and it's in this particular setting, it's like people feel discriminated against, and it's like, but 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 that's that's inappropriate on every level. Like go go to your corner if people want to come, then to each their own. But here it was like to the whole world broadcast through satellite to every country and stuff like that. So Sodom it's like, and Gomorrah, man. Yeah. Jesus is coming soon. That's right. So the Olympic Committee did apologize. Uh, let's see what the communications director has to say. Clearly, there was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Tomajoni really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, uh, we are of course really, really sorry. Ma volonté n'est pas d'être subversif, ni de me moquer, ni de choquer. Ma volonté est simplement de de dire que euh, nous sommes ce grand nous et que euh, euh, hier soir, c'était des idées républicaines, c'était des idées euh, euh, d'inclusion, c'était des idées de bienveillance, de générosité, euh, euh, des idées euh, de solidarité, bref, euh, de ce que je crois nous avons follement besoin. En France, on a le droit de s'aimer comme on veut, avec qui on veut. Euh, en France, on a le droit de croire ou de ne pas croire. Euh, en France, on a le droit, euh, on a beaucoup de droits, voilà. Et euh, c'était l'idée de, de trans faire trans transparaître cette, euh, cette, euh, ces valeurs-là à travers, à travers la cérémonie. All the ideas that he just listed, that's the most abstract I've ever seen. Them. <laughs> they were hard to detect. But it is actually really what he is conveying, conveying, right? They have in their country the right to believe what you want, to love yeah. what you want, right? So if there's children there, is there a line? Mm. I mean, this is the line that art has always pushed up against, right? Art actually changes the popular opinions mm -hmm. that's what the definition of art really was designed i mean when comics first came out it wasn't just hey we want to make fun of people they were politically making fun of people in the renaissance era mm -hmm. and they were changing the public opinion of politicians because they were making fun of them or putting them in bad lights mm -hmm. right and so they have constantly always used art to break down the status quo mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting christianity has been a major part of french history there, there were historical uh, displays. There was a French Revolution, right, and and other pieces of French history. So, how much of Christianity was predominant here, or was it, you know, just mm -hmm. paganism? And it was like you were saying, Candy, earlier. It's like, yeah, they're showing the history, the the Greek history, the Olympic history through Greece and stuff, and then they're making the French stuff in the middle, right? They had they had like uh, some people also talk not only about the the Last Supper, but also about um the horse of the apocalypse that came in 
Yeah. Oh, that, they thought, yeah. that they thought was the horse of they, apocalypse? They thought yeah. it was, but yeah. they're like, oh, yeah. no, it's just Joanna Dark entering. That's well, questionable. I, don't but know. I wonder why they wouldn't admit it. Be like, oh, yeah, that's the that's the Christian representation. That, yeah. That's the horse. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah. I didn't see this part, but people are saying that there was also uh, a segment where they worshiped a golden calf. As really? Well. Oh, I, no, I didn't see I that, didn't but see that people either. are saying that that was part of it. There was the Last Supper, the the horse of the of Revelation. <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna hit apostasy, let's just let's just throw it all I in know, there. I know, I know. But wow. it's like, well, th- I thought we were supposed to only talk about the Greek side, but now we're including it through the eyes of French. Uh, yeah, France. Mm-hmm. And so you talked a little bit earlier about some of the French history that was included in the ceremony. Let's take a quick look at that. So, do you guys remember this part of the ceremony? Oh, I saw that live. Yep. So this is Madame Marie Antoinette. She was the last queen of France. And during the French Revolution, she was beheaded in 1793. And her head is singing, the aristocrats will hang them. Wow. So right after this, there's this French metal band playing uh, Gojira. And they sing a song from the revolution, uh, Sa Ira, which means it will be fine. So this was actually a song that was sung during the revolution that they turned into a heavy metal song. Uh, Also interesting, uh, for those who don't know, in 1798, the Pope was removed from office as well. And the Vatican was no longer the head overseeing the um, politics and kings and nations, right? Because the Pope was at that time above kings and nations, which was a good thing. Separation of church and state, which causes freedom of religion. So there were some good things that happened in the French Revolution. The French Revolution saw a period of de-Christianization, where revolutionary leaders sought to reduce the influence of the Catholic Church and promote secularism. Churches were closed or repurposed, and religious symbols were removed. As part of this, this secularization, the cult of reason was established, It was an atheistic belief system intended to replace Christianity with a new form of civic worship based on enlightenment. Mm. Now, check this out. Do you guys recognize what this portrays, what this is, when it comes to the cult of reason? This is the goddess of reason. They took a woman, a, a real woman, And they parade her through the streets, culminating in a ceremony at Notre Dame, where she was enthroned and celebrated. The festival included music, speeches, and theatrical performances, promoting rationalism and the rejection of religious superstition. You see what's under under her feet? Oh, it's the cross. She's stepping on on the Mm -hmm. cross. Yes. So this was being portrayed at the Olympics as the opening ceremony. And so I'm thinking, wow, they, I mean, the French are obviously proud of their history, but you can see how secular the nation is now. Again, the good thing that came about it was the separation of church and state, but they completely took away all, um, you know, like wealthy people. The, the queen was being murdered for my understanding for no good reason. Um, and they took away Christianity and said, we're going to be atheists now. It's basically what they were saying. And what's really sad is what they were warring against was a wrong picture of Christianity. Mm-hmm. This is how the devil loves to work, right? Yeah. He twists and taints and, and perverts to the point where people get sick of that version. And then they're like, we don't want anything to do with that. We want to go over here and and and, and have nothing to do with that. What they were, we, they were rejecting was a perverted gospel, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, pretty Pretty much, yeah. That that is not a real representation of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus dying on the cross. They took that symbol right there and turned it into a a absolute mockery of what God really stands for. Yeah. So so again, this is being portrayed at the Olympics, where they're saying like, this is our history, the French Revolution, do away with all Christianity, and of uh, uh and take on uh, worship the goddess of reason and, and and become part of the cult of reason but then they portray this like olympic god that is all about revelry and sex and and yeah. drunkenness and just do what thou wilt and if you don't agree with our and cult if, we're gonna have a problem if we're gonna have a problem with you and and we're replacing jesus as a savior for like this figure that in Greek mythology is like the son of Satan. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's, they're making a statement as a nation. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. If you don't like it, get lost. Yeah. Bet you didn't know that when you were watching the opening ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting yeah. that they keep showing like 
I'm going to call it uh, um, knockoffs of of actual history, like like the um, the history with the Greek mythology or whatever. We can see that it all points back to, you know, stuff that happened with Jesus or heaven and earth, like Zeus. And it's like we can see uh, how it can relate to who Satan is or mm -hmm. stuff like that, all the connections. But if you show it, you know, multiple times, you show it enough times. Jesus becomes a knockoff version of, you know, the Greek mythology or whatever mythology. It's true. Right? So if you keep showing it over and over again, then when people look at Christianity, we are the ones that yeah. are cop copying or trying to be mm -hmm. copycats or mm -hmm. trying to, you know, be our own version of the Greek gods or whatever. Right. Right. So th there's also this aspect of, of the danger of showing this history over and over again. Right. Yeah. And, and mocking Christianity because it's like, oh, yeah, we're just mocking, you know, the, the knockoff version of us. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. So Philippe and I were talking about this, like why Snoop Dogg? So if you think about all that we just explained, right, like the doing with Christianity, being OK with the profanity and the reverie and the feasting and the sexuality, you know, uh, he, that's, true. that's really what he stands You're for. You're almost heralding the American version god of that. Yes, because what does he promote in his music and videos? Yeah. Drugs, sex, prostitutes, do whatever you want to do, look for the money and, and the fame and not for Christianity whatsoever. And so that's he's carrying it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That it's like we have these like sort of mythologically eyes versions of these stories, but then here's a real world example. Yeah. For you to follow. Hmm. Pretty much. And people worship him. I mean, they oh, do. Oh, wow. They do. So lastly, let's look at a couple of Bible verses. Second Peter 3, 3 and 4. Knowing this first, uh, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Uh, Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until that day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. You know, if we are really truly living in the days of Noah, how did Noah respond? Man, he was a he prayerful guy. Preaching. He was a preacher preaching, till the sharing. day he walked into that ark mm -hmm. until that shut, right? He was making a call for righteousness. Mm -hmm. He was a preacher of righteousness. And um, I no doubt he had a love for the people. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't do that day in and day out and not have a love for those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we, how should we respond? Like, should we be upset? Like, no, let's stick it back to them or whatever like that. Or really, honestly, should we be responding like Jesus responded when people persecuted him, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't exactly. know what they're saying. They don't know what they're even promoting by by literally heralding the son of Satan, Right. These are people that we potentially could live for an eternity with. Yeah. And we should be praying for them. And there's the verse also. I don't know if you're going to show that verse, but Jesus does say you're going to be hated and persecuted for That's my right. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. That's right? true. But I overcame the world, so don't worry about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It does appeal to it. It's like, you know, they're disrespecting your God. They're disrespecting your religion, all of that. It, ju it does feel like, you know, you got to go out and fight for it. Right. Like Christians we, are typically seen as weak and they're making yeah. a call for like people to stand it's up. Like if your religion is that true, why don't you fight for it? Where's the protest? But all that's that. That's what they said to Jesus when he was on the cross. Exactly. If yeah. you're really the son of God, come off the cross. And Jesus exactly. is like, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm dying for you. That's my battle. And Peter represented that when he was like, let's go to battle, right? And he slices the guy's ear off, right? And Jesus mm -hmm. is like, no, 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 no. That's not how this should be done. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, putting the ear of the guy back on really shows you Jesus' character, right? Yeah. God said, vengeance is mine. Yeah, right? let, let him be the one that, that does that. And people are saying that God did intervene because it was a power outage during the, the Olympics. Oh, wow. And the only place that there was light was a church. Wow. It was like I a did cathedral see pictures or something. Of that. I did see pictures wow. of that. It was like, oh, during Beautiful. the Olympics, everything went out, off. Yeah. And there was wow. only the one light on, up on the hill. And mm. you can see God it shining up at a, a church. Statement. Right? Mm. So it's awesome. like, even if it was just Greek mythology or whatever, if it wasn't a direct mock-up, you know, yeah. yeah, Christians or people from other religions are seeing this and it's like, 
well, maybe it did offend God a little, mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Let's look at this last verse, Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. I'm not sharing this because we're preachers of like hellfire and brimstone and we're just gonna, God's going to come from you. What happened right before this? Abraham was saying to God, Lord, if it's only like this few people in the city that are righteous, would you not destroy the city? God said, yes. Or what yeah. about just this few people? He's got said, yeah. yes. What about yeah. this number? Yes. Yeah. Lord, don't be mad at me. You know? I'm, I'm five. You know? And five? it's not because Abraham was better than God. God wanted to have that interaction with Abraham to show his goodness that yeah. he, he wants to save. The Bible says God is mighty to save. Yeah. Right? He desires to save us. John 3, 16 you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. That's why I'm showing this, because we are in the last days. This is happening right now. We just saw at the Olympics a, another fulfillment of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's only going to get worse. Yeah. But God is a God of love, and he's saying, I will forgive you. I want you to come to me. Please, yeah. I long for a relationship with you. Yeah. Mm. And think of the few people that God was willing to stay back his, his judgment mm -hmm. upon that city for those people. Be the people that stays back God's judgment on that city. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, are we calling down fire from heaven being like, no, nah, burn them. Look at what they did. Like, fry these that's guys, what the right? Said, and Jesus yeah. said, no. Yeah, no, not no, 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 no. Pray for these people even when they spit and they spitefully are offending you and, and, and they're offended by you and you're just stance for Christianity or whatever. Like, we know these times are coming like this, but but be that voice that is like, Lord, Jesus forgive said, them. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. S mm -hmm. Stephen said the same thing. Yeah. You know, and he was being stoned as well. Amen. So it's not something that only Jesus could endure because Jesus was Jesus, right? Right. Like, yeah. no, Stephen did the same. Right. You know, right. Peter changed. Yeah. He was that was Christians man. taking out Christians or like people that thought they yeah. were following God. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like, be careful, you know, calling down judgment. You might be fighting on the wrong side. Mm. Yeah. Or Moses, right? Like, don't kill the people. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. if yeah. you're going to do that, then take my name out of the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Standing right. in the gap. Mm. Yeah. You know, for those at home, if you listen to this and you feel a calling on your heart, I'm encouraging you to seek the Lord while he may be found. Because what happened at the cross, you know, Jesus got scourged, literally hooks being put into his back and his skin and his tissue, his muscle being pulled off. He got, it wasn't just whipping, it was scourging, scourging. He got spit on, he got a crown of thorns being pushed into his head. And then they nailed him to the cross, which was one of the most incredibly painful ways that the Romans could torture anybody, where you would have to push your whole body up against the wounds in your hands and your feet just to take a breath, otherwise you would suffocate. But that wasn't the worst of it. Jesus died having everybody's sins put on him, and he felt like he was separated from God. He did that for you, and no matter what you've done, no matter what your background is, he's saying, I died for you and I want a relationship with you and I want to cleanse you from all your sin and I want to forgive you and give you a new life, eternal life in heaven that is beyond our imagination. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling a call in your heart, I encourage you, pray to God, ask him, can you reveal yourself to me? If you're real, show yourself to me. If you're seeing what's happening in the world and you're recognizing that there is a great battle between good and evil happening where Christianity gets attacked over and over again, that maybe this is evidence for there being a God, go and pray and ask the Lord, show yourself to me. I've done it. I know everybody at this table has done it for to, to ask the Lord, show yourself to me. And uh, we found something that nothing else can fill. Only God can fill that hole in our heart. And only he is called the Prince of Peace, who gives us peace that nothing of this world can ever give us. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you were inspired by this video, please drop a like, uh, leave a comment, make sure you hit subscribe, and we'll be back here with LED Live next week.
Do you have questions about the Bible that you've been struggling to find the answers for? Video Bible Study, or VBS for short, is a YouTube channel that answers your Bible questions in five minutes or less. Check out these easy to understand, comprehensive videos talking about everything from what happens when you die to why does God allow suffering. Make it your goal to deepen your relationship with Christ this year and subscribe to Video Bible Study on YouTube to help you along your journey. I'm sorry, do we know each other? It seems like maybe we've met before. I don't know, this is, uh, it's awkward though. Just as much for me as it is for you. I really wish I had a conversation starter. Oh, hey, oh, what's on my shirt? Yeah, this is the story of the three angels message from Revelation 14. Wow, that totally worked. You know, if you have trouble starting conversations like me, Maybe you should try Lightwear. 